G'day humans, Chris Stead here. This is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Uh, the day after this video up is the day it's officially announced and I've had it for a month, I've been playing around with it. You can see my review on the channel. But in this video, we're just doing a distance test. So I flew it off into the middle of nowhere and to see how far I could get to it. Now, what happened was it was about a five knot headwind with seven knot uh, gusts into it. So pretty bluebird day really. And uh, I had the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus in it, 100% uh, when we took off. And uh, yeah, we just headed out to see how far we could get. Uh, pretty hot day, so a decent amount of sun. Definitely not the kind of testing that they do when they tell you how far it can fly. And look, for the most of this video, I'm just gonna let it run because, uh, well, I just want you to see how long it lasted in real time. So uh, apologies. it's kind of slow going, but uh, I ended up getting just under 6.5 kilometers uh, in a reasonably straight line out here over my glorious local neighborhood. Now it is, uh, that's, well that was pretty decent I thought, so that, it was about I think 2, 6.3 or just below, uh, so it ended up being a 12.6 round trip according to the data collected on the actual uh, RC2 controller. Now we left with 100 as I said, 100% battery. I turned around at about the 55% mark just to basically make sure I had plenty of juice to get home. Uh, but then with the with the tailwind on the way back, we ended up getting back uh, when the battery was on 29%. So we still had a fair bit in the tank really. So considering we still had 30% of the battery left, it makes me think that uh, possibly on a day of similar conditions to the ones we had today, might have been able to get it out as far as eight kilometers, even further. Uh, it says on the box it'll go 18 to 20, I think, 20, 20 max maybe in a wind tunnel. Uh, but yeah, I, I, my tests show that you, on, a pretty, on pretty much perfect conditions, you could, yeah, definitely, definitely get close. Definitely get to that 16 or 17 percent before you hit zero battery. That's obviously going to not leave you with too much. Now it didn't uh, force itself back home. I or we made a choice to send it back. Uh, I did not want it to land in the water. <laughs> so as it goes along, I'll cut into a bit of footage of the actual RC2 remote, just so you can see. Uh, what it looks like through that screen. It's amazing that RC2 uh, remote. Really, really good. Good step up from the RC1. And uh, I was impressed even on the furthest kind of reaches, the resolution didn't really drop. Like we got a good signal. It was giving us, it was interesting, it was giving us, it was giving, it kind of dropped to yellow, yellow bar signal and red bar signal pretty early on. Like maybe, Oh, it's probably yellow by about 3K and red by about 4K, five, four or five, and I thought, oh, we're not gonna make it that far, and it just kept going and going after that. Uh, started to get a little bit tetchy around that 6.3 where we kind of decided, oh, let's turn it back. And uh, it was just starting to throw a couple of warnings at us, kind of saying, oh, I'm you know, losing a bit of signal here. Uh, the screen itself, the resolution, look at it, uh, it held pretty strong. You just start to see it pixelating a bit around the 5.5k mark, I think. And uh, just started to kind of, yeah, just lose a little bit of sharpness, but really, like, you know, I was looking for it. Uh, overall, it kept a very high quality um, considering the distance uh, the whole way through the journey. So very impressive. So it's feeding that back as well, and, and uh, the battery is still lasting, you know, a fair way. Now, obviously, when you get the if you get the base kit, you're just getting the normal uh, intelligent flight battery, not the intelligent flight battery plus. And there's a significant di di uh, difference between the two. So the intelligent flight battery is 2,400, and I'm going to say 34, yeah, 2,400 and something milliamp hours. Whereas the plus is 3,800 something milliamp hours. So 
you know, I worked it out, it's basically 57% more, uh, which is, you know, it's significant. And definitely if you're looking at the various combo kits, getting that uh, uh, Fly More Combo Plus package, which is the top end one, which is $17.99 here in Australia, uh, is pretty, pretty good because you get three of those plus batteries and that's, so it's, you know, 50, 50, 57% more three times. Uh, so you're gonna get a, you know, significant jump there in um, your battery life for the money that you're spending. Especially when you're basically looking at 1,419 here in Australia, I think, for just one normal battery. And that's with the RC2 controller, which you would definitely want. You can get the RCN2 controller at the very base mount, which is $1,119. Uh, but I'm, I'm telling you now, like just go the RC2 for sure. It's so much better. And then from there, you're looking at an extra 300 bucks and you can get three of the plus batteries and you get a carry bag and some propellers and everything like that. So uh, when I was looking at the four packages and having used the top package myself, I was, you know, it was pretty compelling, I thought, if you've got the budget and you can stretch that far. Uh, and, uh, you know, and you need three batteries, obviously. But even, if not, just get the, um, the 14, 19 one and just buy one extra uh, plus battery uh, just to have in the bank for moments like this. But yeah, so sit back and enjoy, I guess. And uh, yeah, if you're wondering how far the Mini, the DJI Mini 4 Pro on the uh, Intelligent Flight Battery Plus can get you, should you want to push it, well I, I gave it a good nudge and you can get pretty impressive distance. Such a little device. Definitely a traveler's drone of choice, I suspect for many of you. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, enjoy the scenery.